Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Well, it's good to see everybody again. And uh, we're with Manny Pacheco and my uh, partner, John Coleman. Uh, welcome aboard for whatever we're going to discuss today is probably going to be one of the best ones that we've ever done because I keep getting better. <laughs> it's always a good time with Manny, yeah. isn't it, Art? It, I mean, whatever we talk about, it's always a fun discussion about films and Hollywood history. Uh, Manny, you know too much. You really do. Well, I know a little, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I wanted to bring up silent films. Right. Um, I, I don't know what channel it is. Maybe it's AMC or one of those, but they have a... I think it's Sunday nights. They have a silent Turner, film Turner Classic uh, movies, festival yeah. every week. And now, not only have I discovered silent films, the, the beauty of the silent films because of that, but I think, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, since you're the historian here, I think the world has rediscovered silent films, maybe not recently, maybe in the last 30, 40 years. I don't, you tell me. But my sense is that after talkies came in, silent films were put in, in the back of the vault and they were buried. And nobody ever considered silent films, uh, again, as worth their trouble because uh, they didn't have sound. Mm -hmm. And so uh, my guess is that even in the 50s and 60s, silent films were not considered uh, anything other than worthy of collecting dust. Uh, <laughs> when did when did this change? When did When did the silent films kind of come back into appreciation maybe is the right word well let's let's first begin by saying you're you're partially correct i mean and charlie chaplin made silence well into the mid 30s i mean he he believed that silent films were still viable and there were many silent film stars that believed that that silence were going to come back it were the movie moguls that saw the the, the change in the, the you know the, the wind was blowing a different direction and so the, yes they became less important um and then in the 1950s, they were all but forgotten. I mean, people were not talking about silent films, and and it was just something that was part of a, a, a relic. It was it was it was it was it, uh, sent back to the past as something that was quaint, and that all changed with a, a little documentary filmmaker named Robert Youngson, and and Youngson was this uh, person looking for some way to brand himself while still enjoying his favorite style of filmmaking, which were the silence, and particularly the silent comedies. And he created over the next decade, starting in 1957, a collection of, uh, of films that actually took snippets of silent comedies. And what he ended up doing was reestablishing the careers, or at least... Uh, bringing back into reruns the, the the great films of Laurel and Hardy, and Charlie Chaplin and Buster Keaton and uh, Harold Lloyd, and uh, he was very successful with his with his uh, silent film collection, beginning with um, the Golden Age of Comedy in 1957, and then it was when comedy was king in Days of Thrills and Laughter and the like, and, and he made a, a, just a number of great. Uh, a, a, a silent film documentaries. And quite frankly, it's the reason why I was introduced to silent films because I adored these documentaries about uh, the silent comedy and slapstick. Robert Youngson was a game changer for people who were born 30 years, 20 years after the silent era went away. You know, I, I, that's I, interesting. I, I've been trying to get into the mood of this whole thing by remaining silent. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, as I recall my history lessons in uh, movies, that silent films really weren't silent. They were, they were perhaps silent when they were shot and they were being uh, uh, brought back into a theater. But didn't many, if not most, theaters at the time run silent films with an organist? Yes, the piano player, the organist, they were an, an essential ingredient in silent films. So yes, silent films were anything but silent when you were in the movie theater. And uh, lots of action, lots of uh, pathos, and uh, lots of music. Now, when Youngson, and it's funny you bring this up because it, it, this is important, Youngson really concentrated on the, on the film comedy. And what he did 
I think set the stage of how we look at comedians even today. Folks like uh, like Robin Williams and and Lenny Bruce and the like as sad clowns. Uh, and what he did is he took these great pieces of comedy from Fatty Arbuckle and, and, and Buster Keaton, and he tied wonderful storytelling about why their lives didn't match what was going on on screen and why many of them died prematurely or, or went into bankruptcy or alcoholism. And the music that he used in the background was a piece that was written by the great uh, classical composer Chopin, and it's called Tristesse. And what that means in French is sadness. And why he would be so savvy into picking a song or a tune or maybe a selection, if, if you want to call a classical tune, a selection. Uh, sadness was just brilliant because many of these silent screen clowns never lived to see their 50th birthday and um, became all but forgotten once the sound hit. And, and, and many of them, uh, you know, lost their careers, uh, fell into alcoholism. And, and like I said, they died prematurely. So Youngson had the wherewithal to use the music and the storytelling uh, to uh, offset comedy with a tragedy. Hmm. What, what happened to Youngston? How long a career did he have and what happened to him? Well, Youngson died relatively uh, young. I think I think he was only in his late fifties when he died in in the nineteen early nineteen seventies. I think he had another two, maybe three or four more documentaries in him, but he died young, um, and and uh, and so we're left with his uh, collection that he has now. And uh, what he was really, really good at also, not only bringing out the traditional clowns, but he was good at looking at the early careers, the silent careers, if you will, of folks that were very successful in talkies like Carol Lombard and Wallace Beery. He was able to take their early silence and uh, and show what, you know, the potential of what their work was going to be a decade later. He has one piece uh, called The Battle of the Century, which is a great piece with Laurel and Hardy that was deemed lost by most filmmakers. It was one of those silence that was that that was supposedly gone because of nitrate uh disintegration and right. all he but he managed to grab uh, you know a couple of, of minutes of the battle of the century and for many decades he was the reason why people remembered the battle of the decade as a very very funny film by laurel and hardy well lo and behold this year the 2020 to 2021 maybe even a little bit earlier uh, the Library of Congress has now deemed that the Battle of the Century is one of, even though it was considered lost, one of the great films uh, to be included in their uh, in their Hall of Fame, shall we say, as as aesthetically important a film that was ever made. And and the good news, because of folks like Leonard Maltin and others, other historians. Um, they were able to reconstruct pieces of the film that were found. A, a certain amount of the film was found from the first reel as well as the second reel in different locations in the nation. They put the films together and they were able to at least 80 to 90 percent of it reconstruct the entire film that was deemed lost. And that wow. particular version is now housed in the Library of Congress National Film Registry. You know, now, that's, we, that's great. We've been floating around the silent film thing, and I was always uh, uh, interested, you, you probably know the answer to this, uh, but I was always interested in there were silent films that with subtitles and then without <laughs> subtitles. So I guess they went from the uh, the action things like the Keystone Cops. You didn't have to, you didn't have to say, hey, stop, you're under arrest or something like that. Uh, to what well, birth of uh, birth of a nation was a silent film, was it not? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. So when 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 did they start to? Uh, or is there a time when uh, they got into more dramatic types of things that somebody decided? Oh, you know what? Why don't we just not have little action things, little things about? Uh, oh, you must pay the rent. You can't pay the rent. That kind of stuff. When did they get to the point where they started doing more serious things with subtitles? Well, they've always done that. I mean. Really, the the, the, dra the dramatic pieces preceded the comedies. I mean, way back when. But imagine if there had been a Robert Youngson of the of the films that were dramatic. What we have 
are the compilations of the great comedies. But imagine if Robert Youngson or somebody else like Robert Youngson had compiled films that were made by Lon Chaney or Gloria Swanson mm. and, 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 and being able to put together little snippets of just terrific films like The Sheik or, or, or Wings, which, which is still around and still very popular, or The Crowd or, or any number of these fabulous films, you know, uh, The Hunchback of Notre Dame or, or The Phantom of the Opera or The Cabinet of Dr. Calieri. I mean, you know, I, I think that there are great films that should never be forgotten, but Youngson is the catalyst that makes us look back at the comedies. And then as Art ably projects, uh, there were there were dramas as well that we should be looking at. And as, as yeah. you mentioned, John, now there's a Sunday night devoted on TCM to the silent film. So I don't think any of this really would happen as quickly as it did. It probably would eventually happen if not for the efforts of Robert Youngson. I think he gets the ball rolling so that we can re-examine silence. Well, I guess we owe him a great debt of gratitude. And we should um, we should because... not be silent about that, should we? Hooray! <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Good, Manny. Thank you so much. This has been wonderful, Robert Youngston. I'm going to have to look him up and uh, yes. find some if, of those if documentaries. Up, if you look him up, leave the T out. It's Robert Youngson. Oh. Youngson. Okay. Yeah, yeah, y o u n g s o n. That's right. Okay. Good. Yeah. You can, if you look him up with a T, you'll never find him. You go. Manny made this up. Well, we may, we may, we may find his long lost uh, uh, twin, uh, right. okay, Robert Youngston with a T. Robert Youngston, that's right. Uh, yeah, Manny, we'll see you. In Ohio. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you again. This has been wonderful. Uh, uh, hearing about a documentary filmmaker uh, who has saved the silence for us, I think. And by the way, that's another subject we should talk about documentaries documentary filmmaking in general. But that's for another time. So thanks again. We'll see you on your website, ForgottenHollywood.com, where we could catch up with everything Hollywood and your blogs and reviews and all the wonderful stuff that you do in between visiting us on Celebrating Act Two. Well, thank you for having me. And I'm always happy to talk about somebody like Robert Youngson. So thank you for allowing me that opportunity. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.